Hello and welcome to my channel, Commerce Specialist. Ladies and gentlemen, today's uh, video is not uh, a lecture video. In fact, uh, in today's video, I'm going to compare uh, two different qualifications. One is an academic, the other is a professional certification. Because I've received uh, numerous emails, calls, messages, even in my office, every second day, students are asking me. So I felt uh, making a video on this so that I am able to explain it in a better way to the masses. Today, I'm going to compare uh, BBA and MBAs with uh, ACCAs, one of the professional qualifications. So I'm going to do an in-depth analysis of both the courses when it comes to their acceptance, uh, the time duration to complete them, uh, the fee structure, uh, the eligibility requirements, so on and so forth. So without further delay, let's begin with the topic. There is a misconception. Everybody thinks that professional certification like CA, CCA, CMA, these are degrees. They are not. So guys, the very first thing we need to know about BBA and MBA or ACCA is the type of qualification. If you look at this, when we talk about the type of qualification, BBA or MBA, it's known as an academic qualification, which is actually a degree. But when we talk about ACCA, it's a professional certification. Now, whether it be ACCA or CA, CMA, CPA, these are all professional certifications. For today's discussion, I have just opted for ACCA because it is one of the most famous international certification. The next aspect we look at is the time duration to complete these qualifications. So on one hand, we are talking about completing BBA and MBA. And on the other hand, we are talking about how long it takes to complete ACCA. So if you look at this, the time duration to complete a BBA is four years. And for MBA, it takes around two years. But if you look at ACCA, the minimum time to complete ACCA is around two and a half years. Sometimes students may take around three, three and a half years. That is if they don't clear their paper in the first attempt. Another thing we have to look at is the eligibility requirements. What is the prerequisite to enter into a BBA and MBA program? And what are the prerequisites to start an ACCA certification? If you're talking about BBA, yes, you should have uh, completed your grade 12. Uh, in some jurisdictions, they call it K-12, plus 2, intermediate. So if you have completed your grade 12 with a certain percentage, because from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, country to country, uh, university to university, they have the minimum admission requirement. So let's say minimum 55% marks you need. Some universities will ask for minimum 65% marks in your grade 12 or maybe higher. And if you're talking about MBA, yes, you have to have your four year bachelor's completed. Only then you can enter into an MBA program. Again, it depends on country to country and jurisdiction to jurisdiction and university to university what would be the exact requirement. For example, some universities may ask you for some entrance test, college entrance test, university entrance test, SAT, GMAT scores, that depends. But when you talk about ACCA, you can even start ACCA soon after completing your schools, grade 10, grade 12, O levels, A levels, and even if you have done bachelor and masters, obviously you can enter ACCA. But the earliest entry uh, point is soon after your school. Here, one thing I need to tell you that for the academic qualifications like BBA and MBA, for getting an admission, it's a task, especially if you're talking about a good university. Why? Because good universities have limited seats and there are so many students who are chasing those uh, seats. So there's tough competition. Not everybody gets in. But one thing is important and worth noticing. 99% of the students who get admission in a, a BB or MBA, almost all of them come out with a degree. Here in ACCA or any other professional course, getting in is not a problem at all. But passing out with a certificate definitely is a problem. Problem means it's a task. 
not everybody who gets admitted into an ACCA program passes ACCA. So at this point, if you ask my personal opinion, I've seen so many people, very few opting for professional qualification and many going for BB and MBA for one single reason, guaranteed success, success of completion of the degree, success of completing the course. Success here means if you get an admission into a university, you will come out with a degree. 99.9% .9 of the times. So if you ask me, I feel uh, getting admission into a BB or MBA program is like standing in a queue, maybe outside uh, a store or something, you are standing in a queue and the queue is moving slowly and gradually. At one point, your turn will come and you will get your degree. But here, the queue is short and it will only move if you have what it takes, which means a lot of effort. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the next uh, aspect we look at is uh, the passing percentage. So if you look at the criteria to pass these qualifications for BBA and MBA, uh, most of the, of the universities have cumulative grade point average, CGPA. 100 out of 100 means a GPA of 4.0. But the minimum uh, criteria to pass is having a cumulative GPA of 2.0 out of a total 4 GPA. In a layman's word, when I say a GPA of uh, 2, that would mean at somewhere around 50%. And here also it's 50%. So ACCA has total 13 papers. In every paper, you have to score minimum 50 marks to pass. Whereas in BB and MBA, when it says cumulative grade point average, there is a possibility in one or two of the papers, you may have less than, you know, 50%. But overall, if your cumulative grade point average is two or above that, uh, you are passing the semester, you're passing the course. Now here, one thing I need to emphasize on, I need to inform you guys, those who are watching, let me tell you, as I said before, getting admission into a university for BB or MBA is in itself, in itself, almost, I'm not saying 100%, almost a guarantee that you're getting your degree. As long as you put in minimal efforts, minimal efforts. But getting admission into a professional certification, whether it be ACCA, CPA, CMA, CA, there is no guarantee at all that you're going to pass. You will only pass if you have what it takes. You will only pass if you put in the desired amount of effort. But that does not mean you have to be a bookworm. No, 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 not at all. Neither you have to be a super genius or above average. No, you just have to be consistent. Working, studying on a daily basis. That's it. If you ask me, uh, my 24 years of experience, I would say I've seen people who are passing ACC or any professional qualification uh, studying on an average two hours every day. I said two hours. That's it. Obviously, if you want to top and you want to get certificate of merit and all that, then obviously the more you study, the better for you. Now comes the most important aspect of the two courses. How much do they cost? So for simplicity's sake, what I'm going to do is, because you know students are scattered all over the world, so I have picked three jurisdictions. One jurisdiction is the Asian countries, to be more precise, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and all. The other jurisdiction is the Gulf countries, the GCC countries. And the third is the European countries, the Western countries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the fee structure. If you are doing MBA and BBA from an Asian country like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and all that. How much it's going to cost on an average. If you do the same BBA and MBA from uh, a Gulf country, how much it's going to cost you approximately. 
And obviously ACC or any professional qualification, you can do it from wherever you want, even sitting in your house, how much it's going to cost you. So to make comparison easier, what I'm going to do is I've converted all the fee structure into US dollars and you can convert it into the, uh, the currency of your choice. So let's discuss how much this qualification cost you in an Asian country, in a GCC country, in a, in a Western country. So guys, the fee structure is so very important because I feel there are so many students and parents, they really don't know about it. So my job is to give you all the information. Comparison, evaluation is your job. And by the way, all the figures I'm using in today's video are a result of proper research. I have collected data from numerous universities and I've come to this conclusion. Have a look at this. So if you're talking about doing a BBA or MBA from an Asian uh, university, which is located in any of the Asian countries, to be more precise, uh, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, and so on, I'm talking about an average university. I'm not talking about the top-notch university. Obviously, figures will vary. But I'm talking about an average university. Uh, if you're doing your four-year BBA and a two-year MBA, it will cost you approximately 11,000 US dollars throughout four years BBA, two-year MBA. And this is only the tuition fees which you pay to the university. This does not include your books, traveling, this and that, all the associated expenses. Why? Because it depends. You are staying in a hostel, you are staying in your own house, your university is close to your house, it's far away, so on and so forth. So I've only uh, taken the tuition fees of the university into discussion today. So if you're talking about an average university in an Asian country, uh, an MBA and BBA, together will cost you 11,000 US dollar and you'll be able to complete it in six years time. But if you are located in the Gulf region, again, on an average, because there are different types of universities, big and small, highly reputed and average. So I'm just talking about an average university. And let me tell you, most of the universities which are located in Gulf are accredited by Western uh, universities. So on an average, if you're doing your complete BBA and MBA from a university which is located in Gulf country, any of the Gulf country, obviously foreign accredited, so it will cost you approximately 38,000 US dollars. But if you intend to move to a Western country, maybe a US, UK, Australian, Canadian university, and if you want to pursue your four-year BBA and two-year MBA, it's going to cost you somewhere around 120,000 US dollars. And again, these are only the tuition fees. I'm not talking about boarding, lodging, this and that. No, 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 just tuition fees. And ladies and gentlemen, something which you don't know about professional qualification, to be more precise and more specific about ACCA, basically ACCA is a three-in-one offer. What is a three-in-one offer? Uh, initially, I told you, you're going to take minimum 2.5 years to complete only ACCA. But if you want the three-in-one offer, ACCA offers you ACCA itself, that is a professional certification, which will only cost you $2,700, including all the books and all that, the reading material resources. ACCA gives you an opportunity to opt for a BSc in Applied Accounting degree, which is from Oxford Brookes University, only at a cost of $480 for which after the ninth paper of ACCA, you have to write a research, supervised research thesis and submit it to ACCA. If it gets approved, you also get a BSc in accounting from Oxford Brookes University, UK. Moreover, if you complete your ACCA, you have the option in the professional papers, not choosing two professional paper of ACCA, instead doing those two professional papers from University of London, and you get an MSc in professional accountancy, which will cost you around 4,300 US dollars.
So if you look at all in all, a professional certification, a bachelor's in accounting from UK, a master's in accounting from UK, all cost you how much? Just 7,480 US dollars. So if you compare the total package ACCA UK is offering you, the professional certification, a bachelor's degree from UK, a master's degree from UK, that costs you just $7,480 in total. And if you compare it with an Asian university, BB and MBA both, this cost $7,400 as compared to $11,000 US dollar is 32% cheaper. So if you compare the cost of ACCA with doing BB and MBA from a Gulf country, it costs you 80% less. And if you compare this with a Western university, it's just 4% of the cost. That means 96% saving. So my advice to most of the students and parents is make the wise decision. I am not on ACCA payroll, neither I am on a payroll of a particular university or college, neither I am promoting one. I am just putting facts in front of you. So especially those students who want to choose accounting as a career, rather than doing your BBA or MBA in finance or accounting, might as well do ACCA, a professional certification. So guys, these were all the comparisons. Now I'm talking about few facts which are known to only few people. Let's discuss them. So guys, having discussed the comparison between MBA and BBA and ACCA uh, with respect to their duration to complete, the cost, the eligibility requirements, so on and so forth. Now a few important things. Number one, we are talking about regulation. Let me tell you, in many countries, there are laws, rules, and regulations which are very relevant to accounting and finance qualifications, professions, and designations. For example, uh, if you talk about these designations, These are uh, CFO, Chief Financial Officer, Head of Internal Audit, Company Secretary. In certain countries, the law says you are not fit to become a CFO, Head of Internal Audit or Company Secretary in a public limited company if you are not a member of a professional recognized international accounting body. I would like to quote an example from uh, my country. So there was a job advertisement for a CFO uh, in the newspaper. An applicant from the top-notch university in my country applied for the same and was unsuccessful uh, for the job. The company, you know, sent a regret letter to the candidate. Candidate felt offended, went to the court, challenged the company's decision of not appointing him. And you know what? The case was dismissed in the first three minutes. The honorable judge says, we value you, you, we value your degree, we value your university, but you are not technically and legally fit to become a chief financial officer of a public limited company. Why? Because the requirement clearly says that you have to be a professional accountant, a member of an international accounting body which even if you are uh, an MBA from Harvard or Oxford, you are not. So I hope you understand this point. The other thing is, in many countries, uh, the law is you know, coming like it's coming to your country. It's spreading like a wildfire. That uh, accounting uh, profession is getting more and more supervised, controlled, regulated. So if you want to be the top uh, position in any of the companies, make sure you have the top qualification. Here I would like to tell you that neither I'm promoting a university or a special uh, professional qualification, neither I'm on a payroll of ACCA or on a particular uh, professional certification. My job is just to you know, give you the right information. The other important aspect is 
because I am myself an MBA, I have two MBA in different disciplines and three professional certification. So I'm just uh, telling you what I have experienced teaching in six universities, BBA and MBA, in different jurisdictions, by the way. The another important aspect is transparency. So in universities, what happens, especially for BBA and MBA? I am the teacher. I make my course outline. I choose how much to teach in the class. I check the papers. I tabulate the results. So most of the time, I'm not saying all the time, I'm not saying all the teachers are like that, but the human element is there. And I've seen this during my student days. You mess with the teacher, the teacher messes with your grades. I'm saying not all of them are like that, but there is a high probability. There is a high probability also that if you are the favorite in the class, you would end up getting higher grade point averages. You don't trust me, ask your friend, family members. But it's not the same for professional qualification. I've been teaching for over 20 years. When I go in the class, I have the syllabus in front of me. I don't have an option to do one chapter or not to do the other. For example, if there are 25 chapters in one paper, in one uh, course, I have to teach all 25 chapters inside out. But the same thing when I'm teaching in a university, even an MBA, executive MBA or a bachelor's degree, if there are 25 chapters, hardly 5 or 10 or maybe 12 chapters we are teaching in the class. So if you look at the difference in the breadth, the depth, professional qualifications are far superior. The other issues students come across. As I said, my job is to tell you before time. Most of the time, uh, because you know, I've been into corporate sectors, I've conducted so many interviews. How employers play with you? When you go for an interview, if a candidate tells me he or she has done uh, a bachelor's or a master's, very good. But my question would be, you have a bachelor's and master's degree, but you don't have a professional certification. Psychological attack. At the same time, if you have a professional qualification, you're sitting in an interview. I said, yes, uh, Miss X or Y, we do appreciate and recognize and you know, value your professional certification, but you don't have a degree. And let me tell you, in most of the organizations, in most of the countries, to have a decent job, you got to have a bachelor's degree. That's mandatory in most of the countries. So what I'm trying to tell you is, you got to have the best of both worlds. An academic degree as well as a professional certification. Especially if you're talking about accounting and finance. So, ACCA gives you all of them. And it also gives you a master's from University of London. So when we talk about ACCA, it gives you a three-in-one offer. A bachelor's degree from Oxford Brookes University in uh, BSc in Applied Accounting. ACCA itself, a professional certification. And a master's and MSc in Professional Accounting from University of London. So in my personal opinion, everybody has an opinion and I respect everybody's opinion. If you ask me, I would definitely go for ACCA. A bachelor's, master's and a professional qualification. Whereas if I compare it to BB or MBA, it's just uh, an academic qualification. And let me tell you, when I compare, overall, ACCA takes half the time and I would say very safely, one fourth the cost, generally speaking. Decision is yours, ladies and gentlemen. So guys, I hope I'm able to add some value. I'm able to explain a few things in detail. If you have any queries relating to today's uh, discussion, please feel free to put your queries in the comment box. Give me your feedback. If you have anything important to ask, any questions, confusions, send me an email. My contact information is in the description section. And if you like today's video, please share it with your friend and family members so that others can also benefit. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for your precious time.